Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the introductory econometrics course. We will find answers to computer exercises seven and eight today for chapter fifteen. Instrumental variables estimation and two-stage least squares. For exercise seven, part one is about the expectations augmented Phillips curve. In estimating this equation by OLS, we assume that the supply shock E T was uncorrelated with unemployment T. If this is false, what can be said about the OLS estimator of beta one? If the error term E T is correlated with the explanatory variable unemployment. The OLS estimator of beta one suffers from omitted variable bias. In part two, suppose that E T is unpredictable given all past information. Explain why this makes unemployment in T minus one a good I V candidate for unemployment in T. If unemployment in T minus one is Uncorrelated with the error term E T, the instrument exogeneity requirement is satisfied. It makes it a good I V candidate. In part three, we regress unemployment in T on unemployment in T minus one. Are they significantly correlated? The simple O L S regression shows that. They are highly correlated because the slope coefficient is zero point seven four, and statistically significant at the one percent level. The instrument relevance requirement is satisfied. In part four, we estimate the expectations augmented Phillips curve by I V. Report the results in the usual form and compare them with the OLS estimates from example eleven point five. The estimated equation by I V is as follows. The slope estimate is not statistically significant at any conventional level. We can compare the estimates in the table, compared with the expectations augmented Phillips curve equation in example eleven point five. The trade-off between inflation and unemployment is smaller and insignificant by I V estimation. Let's do computer exercise eight. The equation is a linear probability model. The goal is to test whether there is a trade-off between participating in a four zero one k plan and having an individual retirement account. Therefore, we want to estimate beta one. In part one, estimate the equation by OLS. And discuss the estimated effect of P four O one K. The coefficient on P four O one K implies that participating in the four O one K plan. Raises the probability of having an individual retirement account by 5.4 percentage points, holding age and income fixed.
impact to, to estimate the settlers' paribus trade-off between participation in two different types of retirement saving plans, what might be a problem with ordinary least squares? Unobserved factors in the error term might affect participation in the two types of retirement saving plans. The OLS estimator suffers from omitted variable bias as a result. The OLS estimates are biased and inconsistent. For example, people with a propensity for saving tend to participate in both plans. The positive correlation between P401k and error term mu leads to an upward biased OLS estimate for the coefficient on P401k. It implies that the true parameter on P401k could be smaller or even negative. In Park Street, the variable E401k is a binary variable equal to 1 if a worker is eligible to participate in a 401k plan. Explain what is required for E401k to be a valid IV for P401k. Do these assumptions seem reasonable? For the E401k to be a valid instrumental variable for P401k, it must satisfy the instrument relevance requirement and the instrument exogeneity requirement. The latter is also called the exclusion restriction condition. The eligibility of the 401k plan and the actual participation in the plan should be positively related, which we can verify in the first stage regression. The instrument relevance requirement is very likely to be met. On the other hand, we could argue whether a worker is eligible to participate in the 401k plan is uncorrelated with the error term because the eligibility mainly depends on the requirement set by the government rather than the worker's desire. If this is the case, the instrument exogeneity requirement also holds and the eligibility of the plan is a valid IV for the participation in the plan. In part 4, we estimate the reduced form for P401k and verify that E401k has a significant partial correlation with P401k. Since the reduced form is also a linear probability model, we use a heteroscedasticity robust standard error. We regress P401k on E401k and other exogenous variables. The eligibility of the 401k plan has a positive and significant partial effect on the participation of the plan. Holding age and income fixed. The eligibility of the plan increases the probability of participation in the plan by 0.7. The instrument relevance requirement is satisfied. In part 5, we estimate the structural equation by IV and compare the estimate of beta 1 with the OLS estimate. Again, you should obtain heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. We estimate the linear probability model by IV and OLS and compare the estimate of beta 1 in the table. In Stata, we can store the results for each regression using the estimates store command. We give a name for each model. Then we use the stab command to show the results in the table. We type stab followed by the names of the models. After the comma, we write the options for the table. Here I show the names of the models. 
the standard errors of the estimates and change the significance level of the stars. I also specify the format of the estimates. The two-stage least squares estimate of beta 1 is 0 0.021, less than half of the OLS estimate. It is statistically insignificant at the 10% level against a two-sided alternative with a p-value of 0 0.12. The estimate is positive and insignificant, suggesting no trade-off between the two types of saving plans. In part 6, we will test the low hypothesis that P401k is exogenous using a heteroscedasticity robust test. In data, we can use the ESTAT endogenous command following the two-stage least squares estimation to perform the endogeneity test. Or we can do it by hand. We first estimate the reduced form equation for P401k and obtain the reduced form residuals new 2 hat. Then we add new 2 hat to the structural equation and test for the significance of new 2 hat. The null hypothesis is that P401k is exogenous. We find that new 2 hat is statistically different from zero. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that P401k is indeed endogenous. Thank you very much for doing the computer exercises with me. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.